My name is Bob Stangerone. For those of us who haven't met, I'm Vice President of Corporate Communications for North America, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. I'd like to start off by uh, letting you know who our presenters are this morning, starting with Ernie Edwards, the President of Embraer Executive Jets, uh, Gary Spulak, the President of Embraer North America, and uh, Taco Gilbert, Vice President of Business Development for Sierra Nevada Corporation. And as you know, uh, Sierra Nevada is the prime contractor on the U.S. Air Force Light, Light Air Support Program. Good morning. I'm Gary Spulak. I'm president of Embraer Aircraft Holding, which is Embraer's wholly owned subsidiary in the United States, Embraer North America. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to thank Ernie for allowing us the opportunity to be here to showcase an aircraft that's, uh, as you know, we make aircraft in the commercial executive jet and defense sector. And in, and in addition to these phenomenal products, no pun intended over here to the left, we do have a, a member of the family of our uh, defense and security products, which is the Super Tucano. The aircraft is here, uh, very close to us here, and uh, you'll receive an invitation at the end of this uh, briefing here to go over and see the aircraft. Uh, it, is the, it is the aircraft that was used by the U.S. Navy as part of their Eminent Fury evaluation program which took place a few years ago and was successfully tested there. And um, so you'll have a chance to see the airplane firsthand. The purpose of this briefing right here is to just give some background on the Super Tucano. Uh, many of you have, may have heard uh, portions of this presentation before, but we'll just kind of summarize it again here to get everybody up to speed on the airplane in terms of the background. Some additional things have been going on with the Super Tucano team, uh, a new member of the team with Boeing coming on. And of course, the captain of our team, uh, which is uh, Sierra Nevada, is here represented by Taco, who will come on after me to talk a little bit more specifics about the Super Tucano program, where it is, uh, some of the dynamics of the program, and where things sit today with the, uh, the competition. Um, going into it uh, uh, from the beginning, which is, so, which is the basic uh, the foundation of the airplane and some of the facts, obviously one of the biggest strengths of the airplane even in terms of this LAS competition, is that is a combat-proven airplane. It is an off-the-shelf, uh, uh, combat-proven aircraft, 180 aircraft already delivered, uh, 160 delivered, 180 aircraft ordered, 157,000 flight hours, 23,000 plus combat hours with no combat losses. It's been certified for over 130 weapons, different weapons configurations, a big differentiator for us in terms of the product itself in comparison to others. More than eight years with an excellent operational record. So there's an 84% fleet availability and 99% fleet mission effectiveness. And those of you who follow the commercial aircraft business know those numbers get up to commercial aircraft reliability numbers. The Super Tucano obviously is a proven a platform, as we said, in operation in many countries. Um, six of them are here mentioned, Colombia, in Colombia, you, you, you probably have read about the success of the airplane there in dealing with the FARC. Uh, Colombians are using the aircraft in a very dynamic way, very similar to how it would be used in Afghanistan uh, for the LAS program. Dominican Republic, country of Brazil, obviously the Brazilian Air Force, one of our biggest customers. Ecuador, Chile, Burkina Faso. On order with three more nations, and um, it's operated right now in the United States. The Super Tucano right now in the United States is being operated by TAC Air. And this is to support US military training and operations. As I mentioned before, we have our partner Sierra Nevada here today. We team with them uh, before the first round of the LAS competition to deliver the A-29 Super Tucano for the US Air Force's Light Air Support Mission, or LAS. Um, both of our companies obviously are strong, stable companies. Uh, Embraer is an investment grade rated company. Sierra Nevada is one of the largest companies uh, uh, today working not only in space uh, and military purposes, but also it's one of the uh, top five U.S. Air Force contractor logistics support providers. And their place on the team uh, as the leader of the team, but also their part in the Embraer uh, Sierra Nevada partnership in the CLS side makes it best in class. Uh, both our companies, as Ernie has mentioned very clearly here, Embraer has a very large U.S. footprint, as does Sierra Nevada. Uh, and we, t we think, again, we've teamed to offer the best solution for the Air Force uh, using the A-29 Super Tucano. We've also, as I've said just before, recently partnered with, uh, with Boeing 
to expand the weapons, uh, the weapons capability uh, offerings of the aircraft, and we think that's going to greatly benefit uh, not only uh, the U.S. Air Force potentially in this LAS competition, but also all other Super Ducato customers. The A-29 um, will be assembled in Jacksonville, Florida for LAS, uh, creating jobs in there and additional investments by us and others. Uh, $2.7 million investment by Embraer in the facility build out, the equipment, machinery, tooling, software to stand up that operation and get it ready for service. The program itself as a whole will support more than 1,200 jobs across the United States for our vendors, suppliers, and other partners. At Jacksonville specifically, 50 new high-tech jobs uh, will be created there for the aircraft production. Um, this is very similar. The standing up of this operation will be set very similar to what Ernie has mentioned here about what we've done in Melbourne, where we've successfully been building now the, uh, the Phenom 100 and very, very soon adding the Phenom 300 to the mix this summer. Um, and the supply chain uh, strategy, as well as the, the parts and equipment that will go in the aircraft, where most, again, come from the United States, uh, will, be, will be used. So that's a tried and true um, strategy that, we've already, that already is in place. And again, generating an annual payroll in Jacksonville, we estimated about $2.5 million. There's more than 100 US suppliers in over 20 states that will provide parts and services for this, for this product and this offering. It is fully compliant with the Buy America Act, where more than 86% of the Super Tucano is made up of parts coming from the U.S. companies or in qualifying countries. Not a single job will be created in Brazil to support this contract. By the way, not, not, not a single job will be created, but some jobs obviously will be sustained there because it's part of the supply chain solution. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the invitation from Embraer to join you here today, and I appreciate you coming out this morning to uh, learn more about Embraer and the products, and uh, right now learn more about the light air support contract. As uh, Gary mentioned, we're from the Sierra Nevada Corporation. We are Prime Systems Integrator, and as such, we uh, take pride in putting together best-of-breed solutions for our customers. It was uh, as based on that best-of-breed tradition that led us to partner with Embraer on the light air support program. As we surveyed all of the aircraft that were available, the A-29 was hands down the only aircraft that would meet the mission demands that uh, were required for this uh, mission, both uh, for hopefully the United States Air Force uh, eventual use, but certainly for our partner nations around the globe. The aircraft, as Gary has mentioned, is combat proven. It is technically superior and it has a great growth path which is demonstrated by the partnership you now see with Boeing continuing to add additional uh, weapons capability and mission capability to the platform. <clears throat> the uh, light air support program itself was envisioned as an IDIQ or indefinite delivery indefinite quantity contract vehicle for foreign military sales to partner nations across the globe. As such and a non-developmental program, we were looking for not only a capable aircraft, but a low-risk solution that was sustainable by partner nations in austere environments. Again, the A-29 was the aircraft that could do that. The initial contract has a ceiling of $950 million, and the initial delivery order was for 20 aircraft to support operations in Afghanistan. The aircraft was already evaluated under Operation Imminent Fury the aircraft that is parked here on the ramp. So we knew that it was the right solution going forward. The contract was awarded in December to our team, but uh, following a uh, legal challenge by our competitor, that contract was terminated and the contract uh, was reopened. Where we stand in the competition now is all proposals have been submitted and we are in the evaluation notice or the question period from the customer and uh, we're responding to questions going forward. We've talked a little bit about the fact that it is Buy American compliant and the fact that this will create no jobs in Brazil, but it will create jobs here for American workers in both Florida and across the United States, both in the production as well as the sustainment of the uh, contract. Talk a little bit about the roles that we have. As I mentioned, Sierra Nevada is a prime system integrator and we are the program management element of the program. We are the fifth largest supplier of contract logistics support to the Department of Defense, and it's part of that experience that we bring to this team. First, 
We'll provide the program management, sustaining uh, the logistics uh, supply chain with uh, great support from our partners Embraer, supplying not only the logistics support for the aircraft, but also for the ground training devices going forward. The training that we will provide is not only for air crews, but for the maintainers of this aircraft going forward, so that our partner nations can go uh, become self-sufficient. Embraer not only designs the platform, they also uh, manufacture the platform and provide a lot of the essential parts support that is required to keep this uh, program going forward. To tell you a little bit about the airplane, uh, important uh, points are that it was a clean sheet design. It was not a trainer aircraft that was modified for this mission. In fact, the Takano aircraft years ago was a, a very effective trainer and light air support, but as the mission continued to expand, Embraer looked um, at trying to modify that aircraft and realized it could not meet the mission requirements that demanded a clean sheet design. And I would encourage you, if you would like, to walk over to the aircraft afterwards and we'll walk through some of the things that make this aircraft very unique for this mission and uh, will make it successful in the light air support program. Important things to remember is that it is operational today. There's a very low risk solution. In this day and age, when we demand value for the warfighter and demand value for the taxpayer, this is a proven platform, not only in the, uh, the mission capability, but also in the reliability that it has. Very low operating cost and significant room for growth. It is designed for austere environments, which is critical for the partner nations uh, that we will be supporting. Many of the runways are unimproved, and that dem demands a very rugged gear, low pressure tires, as you can see from the uh, various aircraft uh, that operate off of dirt strips that are parked here at Oshkosh. It has a broad stance. That broad stance is important because it gives it superior ground handling capability, crosswind performance, and uh, also it has a great uh, takeoff capability uh, on those unimproved uh, <clears throat> runways. I would point out that uh, in the original flight test that was done as part of the light air support program, the uh, flight test was performed at Truth or Consequences Airfield in New Mexico. I'm not sure if you've been there before or not, but there's a dirt strip that's uh, sort of bisected by a paved runway. Where the, uh, the intersection occurs, there's about an inch and a half lip that uh, uh, where the dirt crosses the paved runway. This aircraft took that uh, uh, lip at 80 knots without even thinking about it. It's designed for this type of performance. It has a very long life with 12,000 uh, equivalent flight hours and uh, great G capability, plus seven and minus 3.5, and I don't know how many flyers we have out there, but I don't want to experience minus 3.5. <laughs> The aircraft, again, combat proven and has over 130 certified weapons uh, configurations. That's very, very important because it gives a flexibility to the aircraft uh, that is uh, unrivaled. In addition, it has internal 50 caliber guns. There's a requirement for the light air support uh, aircraft to have a 50 caliber gun. Being internal is important because one, it frees up a, a station underneath the wings for other uh, payloads. Two. By being mounted internally, it gives you an accuracy that uh, is not possible in a pod-mounted gun. Third, it reduces the fuel consumption because it reduces the drag on the aircraft. So a, uh, a great design that uh, Embraer brought to the program. And I would also add that it's not only a great design for the gun, but the uh, sustainment of it is uh, designed for osteo field operations, easy maintenance, easy loading, easy in installation and removal. It's also designed for, the, for long comfort, and that's important because it has great endurance, which is going to be important in those partner nations. Loitering over a, uh, an area of interest, convoy escort, whatever it may be, designed for the comfort of the crew so they can continue to be effective in their mission. I would also add that the onboard oxygen generation system was specifically designed to improve austere field uh, uh, maintenance and support. From the very beginning, you'll notice as you look at the aircraft, it is designed, I keep coming back to this, for that austere field operations. From the rugged gear, the low pressure tires, the high ground clearance to uh, avoid obstacle and uh, avoid FOD damage. The placement of the oil cooler as opposed to underneath the aircraft, subject to FOD damage, over to the side. 
It has uh, modern avionics. It's fully uh, compatible with today's modern fighters and an easy transition back and forth. The training, while there's a, a very proven training system which Embraer has designed and executed across a number of countries, some of these nations, while not ideal, have launched crews into combat with as little as three and a half hours of introduction into the aircraft and they perform very, very well. The hands on the throttle and stick controls, again, uh, are very comfortable to today's modern fighter pilots. And it has a very precise navigation system, which is uh, not only great for the navigation in these uh, uh, partner nations, but also uh, improves the reliability of the weapons. Again, fully compatible with today's fourth uh, generation fighters. The data links, which have already been integrated into this aircraft previously, um, are numerous. Over seven different data links, including Link 16, has been uh, proven with this aircraft before. It's designed for survivability. With both uh, chaff flares, a uh, five-bladed prop for noise reduction, and uh, a uh, FLIR EOIR ball, electro-optical IR sensor ball with uh, laser capabilities under the belly. I would point out as you look at the aircraft too, I would look at the size of the aircraft. The aircraft has a 1600 shaft horsepower engine to uh, give it exceptional acceleration performance uh, throughout the flight profile. But because of that uh, high uh, torque engine, it has uh, larger flight controls than are found on some trainers. It has a longer uh, fuselage and a larger tail. But that reduces the need for any throttle restrictions that may be uh, necessary. You have full throttle movement across the entire uh, spectrum of flight, asymmetric loads, crosswind performance, all exceptional. In summary, SNC is thrilled to be part of this team. We're thrilled to represent uh, our team and the A-29 to uh, not only the U.S. Air Force, but to the partner nations, which continue to express great interest in this aircraft. We're looking forward to a uh, very successful competition and looking forward to winning it for a second time based on the technical superiority, the low risk, and uh, combat-proven performance of the aircraft.